of the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus, COVID-19. His Excellency, Mr. Mohammed Al-Qaid, Chief Executive of the Information and E-Government Authority, Dr. Walid Almana, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Qahtani, Infectious Disease Consultant at the BDF Hospital, Member of the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus, Dr. Jamila Salman, Infectious and Internal Disease Consultant at Salmania Medical Complex. And we would like to note that this press conference is going live on the YouTube channel of the Ministry of Health in five different languages. And we also have the journalists and reporters joining us remotely. Now we begin with Mr. Muhammad Ali Al-Qaid, Chief Executive of the Information and E-Government Authority. Thank you very much. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, we would like to welcome you all in this press conference in which we provide you with all the updates related to dealing with COVID-19 in the Kingdom of Bahrain. First, I'd like to express my thanks for the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus, led by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister for their efforts and continuous efforts. So thank you very much. First, I'd like to talk about the efforts of the IGA in coordination with all the bodies and ministries and the government in the Kingdom of Bahrain to deal with the decisions related to social distancing and reducing the, uh, the presence, the physical presence in the bodies. As you all know, most of the ministries have turned electronically 100%. Some services have provided 18 to 70, 80 to 70 percent. So there is an incredible ch change without uh, reducing the service, the basic services. As you know, for example, the uh, court cases have been uh, transformed electronically 100 percent, starting from the beginning to the trial to hearing the witnesses and issuing the decisions. Also, we have many services, uh, for example, for the Directorate of Traffic, the Directorates of the Minister of Interior. I have an example, for example, for the services in IGA, the CPR, the uh, issuance of uh, the birth certificate. All of these services for the identity card have been transformed electronically and launched by the Minister of Interior a month and a half ago. We noticed that the statistics have doubled for the users. Four times we have 19,000 services done electronically. That shows the readiness electronically and might need some updates. For example, updating the information security in order to protect these devices. And there was a bit of load, but generally speaking, I believe that this is great advancement for the Kingdom of Bahrain that the ministries used to work. Most of the users said like the services are much easier now as for the employees 50 to 70 are working from home and that requires security codes also meetings have been provided from distance and to provide all the technical and necessary support for the government bodies I'd like to show you now the slides to talk about the application, be aware, to give you some statistics. As you can see, the app was launched at the end of March, 
We started the app. We developed it within a week. The app did not stop then because we discovered we need an integrated system. So we built an integrated system that connects all the buddies. We have the Ministry of Health. They collaborated fully with us at the International Airport, at the Exhibition Center. We have them related to this app. Also, for the uh, channel of the 444, they can relate their cases to the app. We also have a system for monitoring the cases in the Ministry of Interior to check the self-isolation cases and so they can print out the cases and they are connected with many services in the government. And I would like to note that we have used the smart intelligence and the uh, large data to assess the contacts tracing. As you know, the directives of His Majesty during the last legislative term, they, he emphasized on the smart intelligence. And so today, through this app, we have used the smart intelligence extensively and to effectively have the tracing service. Now, moving forward, we can see through statistics, we have the results. The app has three points. The statistics guidelines, the results of coronavirus tests, and guidelines, as you know, from time to time we provide new services, the results of coronavirus tests. The, the second point for home quarantine, which is mandatory, anyone who is self-isolated in order to feel comfortable at home without having being at a government quarantine, they, need, they have to download this app and to follow the instructions of the self-isolation. And they have the bracelet. We have 30,000 bracelets, just in case we might need them in the future. The third point is to notify the citizens and residents. This one is optional in order to protect them in case they had any contacts, we can send them notifications immediately and they can conduct the test before they transmit the test. So this side is optional. The data we save for the tracing and moving of locations are deleted after two weeks to six weeks. And we have already deleted the first week of the app. All that data of the contacts have been deleted. Also, the access to these data are restricted. None, whether operation rooms or any government entity will be able to access to these data. They are just used automatically in order to protect and safeguard the health and safety of everyone. The last one, the statistics, we notice the positive great response and we thank the citizens for their, because we really have an aware society. Over half million downloads, we have over third of a million, 300,000 uh, registered. Those using the app as home quarantine are 6,123 and for those who have been identified through the app who have this infection are usually we have the countries they have they have one, one percent to conduct tests in countries but we have uh, conducted so many tests and we have accuracy of the results 
and by using this smart intelligence we've been able to increase the accuracy and hopefully within time we will use the bracelets and those who have registered appointments for tests are around 3519 this is what I wanted to brief you on through this app and I'll leave the floor to Dr. Walid Al-Mana, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for the brief. And yes, as you, can, as you said, we hope that we will be an aware society always. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, we would like to welcome you. In this press conference, we confirm the beginning that the medical, the national medical team is con ready and continuous to face coronavirus COVID-19 and to collaborate with all the authority authorities. His Majesty's uh, uh, praise yesterday made us feel proud and at the same time put extra responsibility to be really to follow the guidelines and instructions. It was pride for everyone, but keeps responsibility on everyone to follow the guidelines and, inst and instructions. As His Majesty mentioned yesterday, he referred to the medical and nurses who are working uh, in the first on um, who are at the first line of defense he expressed his majesty the gratitude and appreciation for these workers and we on behalf of everyone we express our gratitude and praise to his majesty this is a source of pride and we confirm to his majesty that we all are soldiers who are going to work 24 hours for the safety and security of everyone and we are under your directives and based on the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown of Prince the Health Minister has announced that the isolation and quarantine capacity was increased were increased there were some uh, talkings about the figures whether for isolation and treatment or for quarantine so we just would like to to inform everyone that these figures are dynamic based on the directives of his magic of his royal highness the crown prince and the minister of health has decided to have increased the capacity of the isolation and treatment to 4,257 of which 3,330 beds are occupied and for the quarantine increased to 5,489 of which 515 are occupied. So we have proactive steps to face all and deal with all the scenarios because the situation is changing so we need to cope accordingly and the success of the efforts would require the collaboration of everyone this requires everyone's responsibility and for the society to strictly follow the guidelines and instructions and we in the Kingdom of Bahrain count on the awareness of the people to we count on each one of us to overcome this exceptional circumstance we have started with this crisis and we already had awareness and it had impact and we have assisted it our experience generally was excellent so we count on the awareness of the people and to continue so this facing the globe is exceptional we cannot face without following the instructions and guidelines and to sense the responsibility towards 
We're thinking today of our family, of our relatives, friends, our country. So, so we should not think like the results and the impacts will be on just self, individual, you know. It will be on our families, fathers and mothers. So that's why we have to consider this all together. And due to the non-compliance, we have identified uh, one of the cases who transmitted the disease to their friends and co-workers and families and contacts of the contacts and also other families. So the R0, we said, if the disease is transmitted from one person to another, this is based on their awareness and following the social distancing and, and wearing face masks and washing hands. So all these responsibilities is on one. So we had, unfortunately, some cases where they did not comply to the guidelines. And of course, this would have an impact on other cases and increased. And so we call upon everyone to follow the instructions and guidelines always to strictly follow them during the month of Ramadan. This month is a blessed month. And it is an opportunity if we really committed to fasting, praying, and to the spiritual connection with our families to, through the technology. So I think this month is an opportunity for everyone to following and committing to the guidelines of the country. It is very important and it should be on the top priorities of the achievements in this month. Thank God and the Kingdom of Bahrain, our health system is qualified to combat this virus. However, we do not want what we have reached as a health system to be overloaded with extra cases because of reckless non-compliance. So many people have talked like we will reach zero cases, which we hope, but this zero case requires zero uh, non-compliance, requires 100% of compliance. So remind yourselves, if we have zero non-compliance and 100 compliance, we will achieve that. So it is very important to follow that. Maybe our word should not be taken like, you know, this is a sort of strictness. No, this is just to remind everyone. And we still count on the awareness of the people. But at the same time, to be precautious is important. So with the collaboration of everyone, we will reduce the R naught to, we will, to less than one. Well, we say again that one means the disease would be transmitted to one person. So if we have less than 1.5, say, or 0.4, that means the transmission would be less than one. So that we would be in a better situation to give us an opportunity that our procedures and instructions would be less. So thank God with the collaboration of everyone, we will reach with R0 to be less than one. And we have reached it just to for your information. But just generally speaking, for 14 days to be less than one. We confirm that dealing with coronavirus as a pandemic requires changing the situation accordance to the changing circumstances around the world. So we will have updates and changes to cope with the changing situation. So Team Bahrain is working continuously to work flexibly to achieve better results. The Aware Society 
with your determination and your great intention will overcome this challenge thank God and will have better results now leave the floors to my colleague Dr. Manaf Al-Qahtani infectious disease consultant at the BDF hospital thank you very much Dr. Walid al Mana. before I start my speech the royal speech of his majesty was really at its time we have we it had great impact on us with a great intention and determination to combat this virus and I was talking to Dr. Walid since February the thing that you can be proud of we still have the collaboration of the efforts of everyone from all the authorities institutions we have one determination to overcome this virus and it will not happen unless we have our hands together in society and we said this is an award society because we confirm that we will be as always an award society to combat this virus I will have summarized two points first as mentioned by Dr. Walid al -Mana, I think we must change the our customs and habits in Ramadan. The second point, the instructions to increase awareness if we have, and I'll provide you with some examples of how to uh, trans, uh, transfer cases to treatment or quarantine centers. When we started this challenge, we have the determination that we are counting on our award society. In any occasions, we know that Ramadan is exceptional. And we always say like, Corona is not going to steal the joy of Ramadan. There is a responsibility over the Bahraini society we mentioned it before the gatherings during iftar maybe we missed it but it can be limited to the small fa members of the family but the ghabga's meals and the majlises we can avoid them and also to go out only when necessary whether during the holy month of ramadan or other months as for the increase in the number of the cases of contacts, it was an indicator of non-compliance to the guidelines and instructions issued by the authorities concerned. And we have fully confident that after this press conference, we will have change. We will change these figures due to the collaboration of citizens and residents. As for the mechanism for transferring the cases or the suspected cases, we have two types of uh, transferring. You might hear them. The first one, the first type in case we have a suspected case or an active case. If we're using a car, personal car, there are certain guidelines we would like to remind ourselves of. The Passenger and the vehicle should wear face masks. And if it was in the patient sitting at the back seat, all the windows should be open. And if they're going to, to turn on the air conditioning, it is preferable they should not use it or just use it with the mood of a fan and just in case the virus would not be going through the car and to go immediately to to the place allocated for isolation after the case is transferred or the suspected cases is transferred we have to keep in mind the personal hygiene to wash hands for 30 seconds or use the sanitizer if available and to clean and disinfect all the surfaces of the car as per the guidelines available on the website of the Ministry of Health just in case we used the personal car if we 
if the bus is used, the same thing would be applied for the passenger and the vehicles. They should wear face masks and the number should be limited to keep in mind the distance between the passengers and the driver. And also the windows should be open, all of them. And the same thing to wash hands and to disinfect the surfaces of the vehicle. To conclude, my speech today is brief because the, our colleagues have already mentioned what uh, the necessary guidelines and we emphasize that everyone should follow the instructions and guidelines to reduce the load and I always conclude by saying that following the instructions is a national uh, responsibility. Now I'll leave the floor to my colleague, Dr. Jamila Salman, to talk about the health condition of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Thank you very much, Dr. Manaf. Peace be upon you all. At the beginning, I would like to express my thanks to all the workers at the front line, whether Minister of Health, Minister of Interior, uh, the Defense, and all the other bodies working 24 hours and putting the health and safety of the citizens and residents a priority for them in order to reach the desired results. And I would like to confirm that we're following, as usual, the precautionary, precautionary measures and we're extensifying them, whether we mentioned them before in case of uh, testing the cases and following up with the cases. And yesterday, the Ministry of Health uh, announced the death of an 80-year-old male Bahraini national. And it was suffering, he was suffering from underlying chronic health problems. And I'd like to express my deepest condolences to the individual's family and the deceased uh, received uh, extensive 24-hour treatment from a specialized medical team as the other uh, cases. These protocol uh, treatment protocols we follow up in case so the uh, symptoms develop and we as a medical team we try to to take the recommendations, the updates, and implement them within the treatment protocol in the Kingdom of Bahrain. As for the health conditions, uh, so far we have 3,330 active cases. Most of them are stable, with the exception of five critical, but they are not really uh, really critical, and hopefully everyone will be recovered as for the recovered and discharged, we have 2,192, and they have been discharged either from isolation or quarantine centers, and we wish that we will have better results in the future. I'll go back to what mentioned by my colleagues, the increase in the number of the cases, maybe over the past five to six days. And we have always, uh, reminded in a periodic manner to follow the instructions and guidelines of the, uh, of the authorities. So social distancing is very, very important. As for the family gatherings, yes, everyone wishes to meet with their families, but to look at the wider objective, this is a temporary period. We can overcome this by the collaboration as you have seen and as mentioned by Dr. Walid and Dr. Manaf. We had families over one person within one family because of these gatherings, family gatherings. As for the instructions, we emphasize on the simple things and they are not complicated. You know, personal hygiene, washing hands, disinfection of surfaces, dealing with all the Items and tools you're using, you can disinfect them. And if you have any symptoms, you can call 444 
and you will have all the guidelines where to go and how to get the tests and other tests. To conclude, we emphasize that we look forward from everyone to collaborating with us and following these instructions and they are part of the social and personal responsibilities. Everyone in the Kingdom of Bahrain, citizens and residents, they have responsibilities towards themselves, their families, because I don't think there would be a person who would like or who wish to have their elderly people and their families to have an infection. The second point, these efforts, if we have them together, we will all be at the front line. We can reduce the number of the cases and this will be added and to the uh, path of having all these efforts to success and to have reached a level of in a very far better situation. So we hope that this would continue only with the collaboration of everyone as one team to overcome this and to have better results in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, the speakers, for your briefs, and I'll leave the floors for the journalists and reporters. We'll have their questions who are joining us remotely. First question to Mr. Muhammad Al Qaid from Bana. How to secure the data and personal information by the IGA? Thank you for the question. It is very important. And many are wondering maybe about that. As we mentioned before, and we confirm, the data of citizens are preserved, protected, in, in safe hands. And we have them all uh, uh, protected. Nobody can have access to them. All these data who have, for example, the app, uh, BOR app downloaded, they are measured and assessed automatically, and they are, the person is measured whether they are in a car or walking. We only take the accurate points where they have actual contacts automatically, and if we got any uh, results and the app showed some results of contacts we change the rules and the app in a way that there will be smart intelligence implemented so nobody would have would be would have a chance to have a look at these data and there is a legal term in the app that shows that all these data are maintained in a confidential manner and they will be deleted over a period of time and we have already started deleting some of these data so the those who are mandatory uh, they are only used by the operations room and they have access to the data because by law they have to be at their isolation quarantine uh, at home. Question from al Watan newspaper to Dr. Walid. Do we expect to have an increase in the number of the cases over the coming period of time? And if this continues, would the situation uh, be, would allow to reopen salons and other shops? Well, the first part, do we, are we going to have an increase? We cannot expect, but we might have an increase. That's expected for many reasons, because of non-compliance or say the violations, but we have issued uh, a decision to increase the number of the tests conducted. If we used to have 2,000 tests conducted a daily, we and uh, registered 60 or 50 cases. Now we're conducting 60, 6,000 tests. So we expect to have more cases registered. So tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, will be collected 
will be maybe instead of having them over days, we will discover them within one day due to the increase in the number of the tests. So it is expected to, in, to be increased because we have more tests and the tracing is more and we have allocated more locations where we have more suspected cases. So there are many reasons where it might have uh, an increase, but we'll be optimistic as if we had the numbers increased, are we going to reopen the salons? The instructions will be strict, more strict. We need to know that the numbers are not the only factor for deciding on opening or reopening of the salons or shops. We might have an increase in the number of the cases because we have conducted more tests, but people are following the instructions. So over time, we'll have less active cases. So we have many elements and factors. One of them, the are not the daily uh, active cases discovered. Also the capacity in the Kingdom of Bahrain. It is very important to what extent we have for quarantine and isolation. To what extent are we ready for the, these figures? So the answer, when to close or reopen, as mentioned by the medical team, we are studying that on a daily basis and based on that we decide. And we might say like we still have measures that are accurate and they are not random. So, Dr. Manaf even mentioned about like the cars, buses, how to tra transfer cases. So we are doing them smartly with experience without just uh, with study. And hopefully we look for the better. Question to Dr. Muhammad Al-Qaid from Bana. How to follow up with the cases using the bracelets? Thank you very much for the question. The bracelets are connected to the phone. It cannot be uh, removed for those self-isolated. And it is connected to Bluetooth device. And they are required to turn on the device of Bluetooth. And the, uh, the their phone should be fully charged. Any uh, issues or problems with the Wi-Fi or with the battery or disconnection, there will be a notification in the app and in the operations room so that the, the, the person will be contacted and will be notified that you might have left the uh, distance and the case might be transferred to the public prosecution to take the required actions. So. The follow-up is automatically we have random tests, uh, random photos. So the person would be required to take a photo with uh, the bracelet showed, shown on the photo and to show that the picture is real picture. So, and the bracelet is uh, to be shown just to see that it is real and accurate and they are at home. This is like the techniques and methods used for uh, following the those who are wearing bracelets. Question from Al Bilad newspaper, Al -Bilad newspaper Rashid Al Ghaib. What is the average of cost of the assessing and testing and treating the one individual? Is it 130 person and with the intensive care, 800 dinars daily? First, for the treatment, the core and the treatment, 130, it could be over than that on a daily basis. This is just the estimate of the value. So it could reach 130, it could be more. As for the intensive care, it is usually more, not less than 700. It could reach 800 dinars as a daily value for 
without like conducting operations or surgeries. And so yes, it could reach that amount. As for the testing, for if you if you have tests for a person and the person and the test was positive, that would require further tests, two or three tests, until we reach that they are the result would be negative. So the total cost could reach 150. Why not? I don't have a number in my mind so far, but. Would it reach? Yes, it would reach. It might reach and it could go more than that. It could be 130 and it could be more than that. And so I think this shows uh, that the, the, the care and provided by the Kingdom of Bahrain, regardless of the cause, we in the Kingdom of Bahrain thank God and due to the directives of the wise leadership we are con going continuous question from Mahmoud al-Rafiq editor from 24 hour uh, 7 is Bahrain going to going to calculate the results of plasma which seems to be the only treatment for COVID-19 yes we have announced the clinical trials of plasma we are now over three weeks. Thank God, the result, the initial results are positive. We're still waiting for the to finalize the indicators. We might need one to two weeks, and then we will present all the results related to plasma treatment. Question to Dr. Jamila Salman from Yara Nasser and Ba'al Yom newspaper. As for corona, there is an indicator that is different than the other diseases, that the percentage of infection uh, to males more than females. Is that true? I think the question is important. As for the percentage for men, generally, all the countries is 60 to 75 percent males more than females. So this could be two parts, because yes, they are more exposed, or they are more exposed to complications. And there are many theories that clar clarify this, but there is nothing confirmed. Maybe men are more exposed to going out, to contacts, to working outside home. The second thing, men generally, they have more cardiological, uh, cardiology diseases. So that's more exposed to, uh, they also have the tes testosterone hormone. They have more uh, in their bodies, which have, which have them more exposed to the COVID-19. There are more studies around the world, in Europe as well. There's something called ACS2. This, these receptors, they have noticed that they are more in men than women. So COVID-19 uses this receptor in order to get into the body. That's why we say men are more exposed. The other theory related to immunity system, women, they have the exosome. They have two, the men, they have one, Oxymorosome. So that's why women, the immunity diseases, they have uh, like uh, more other diseases, so they have more immunity, including COVID-19. So these are just theories, but generally, yes, that could lead because to say that saying that men are more to women. Tamama Busafi from Al Ayam newspaper. Why not exposing the nationalities of the cases? What about the drivers accessing Bahrain through King Fahad Causeway? Are they being tested? The first part, why not ex uh, uh, announcing the nationalities? If you go to the website of the Minister of Health, we announce them generally without names, 
we, we mentioned their we mentioned their nationalities, we mentioned the dates, but without mentioning their names. So we do not hide any information. Everyone can have a look. But these are details not without names. But nationalities, yes, we have them available on the website. And everyone can have a look at the second part, the drivers. Anyone who, are, who is accessing Bahrain through the causeways, through all the ports, they are being tested. And we have, uh, I would like to assure everyone that even drivers are tested and we make sure that they are healthy and we trace them until they uh, leave Bahrain. So this is something uh, exchangeable with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. To Mr. Muhammad Al-Qaid, are we going to have another version of Be Aware app and when are we going to have this? This is an excellent question. As we know, the app, as I mentioned before, we developed it within a week and then we have developed and built an integrated system related to that app. It took us four weeks. We have the app provided 12 versions within the first 14 days of its launch. We're continuous. We have added the service of the tests, the appointments, maybe among the services to be added to this app, languages. We will have seven languages. And so we regularly have services added to this app. For example, to subscribe in Bah uh, to Bahrain TV's uh, program, stay at home. So we just take random numbers, five numbers. If the person is not willing to participate in this program, or in this show, we do not share their data. And there is a feature in this app to have freedom to not participate in this TV show. So this is uh, maybe we are in the fourth version and 12 or 20 simple updates. Uh, we are done with the press conference. We thank very much the speakers for their briefs and for answering the questions. And we thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching and listening. And we remind you on following all the instructions and guidelines to combat coronavirus, COVID-19. Thank you very much.